Your teen requested a ride, but this time not from you. It's through their Uber teen account. You drive your teenager around a lot to their friend Jacob's house, their other friend Jake's house, to James's, to Jaden's, to Jalen's, to. Oh, uh, mom, this is Jake's house, not Jacob's. Now with an Uber teen account, your teen can request a ride under your supervision. The ride with a highly rated driver, and with live trip tracking, you'll follow along the whole ride to their friends' houses that all sound the same. Add your teen to your Uber account today. See app for details. Bye, mom. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Hey guys, I'm really excited about today's episode today's talk is going to be all about ai and career opportunities i've got a fantastic guest i just had a great pre-interview conversation with ben gold and he's going to be talking all about leveraging ai for your career and it's really fascinating what ai can do is and i'm really looking forward to the conversation so ben welcome thank you i'm excited to be on this call yeah you have a actually very interesting take on ai because you're actually using it not only to to keep your job, but actually to help with career transitions. And I know a lot of the audience out there, they're looking into alternative streams, looking to pivot. So tell us your story and your journey. So my journey is I've been about 20 years in the technology space. 12 years of that is in the HR tech space. The last five years, I've been working with an AI product on the enterprise level. And I have just been absolutely fascinated with how AI is able to crunch large amounts of data and give actionable insights right away. Now, in, in the early part of this year, I was let go from, the, from my job, and mm. I was experimenting with this new generative AI technology, ChatGPT, and I was using it for my cover letters for interview prep. I found, so at first I was looking for a job and I was using it as a way to, to be more personalized. After about three months, what I realized, this is a very unwieldy process where I have 16 LinkedIn easy applies and I would go onto websites and have recruiters come and I was having difficulty keeping track of everything. So I came up with this idea to create a company, a startup, and I learned all about that. I put together a team. We put together a prototype, which was to make the job seeker experience better or more efficient by having a, like a CRM kind of Experience. As I was building this out, I decided to engage with the audience, to actually sit down with people that are job seekers, to meet, to go to job networking sessions, to also talk to people that are employed but looking to change careers. And I realized that where I'm focusing now is more on the is more on the consulting space. So I have a consulting a business practice right now where I help people determine. Their, how to use AI for whatever they're looking to accomplish. Now, my message is you, AI first. So the AI first strategy, whether you're employed or unemployed, is, is become very familiar with it. If you've never logged into ChatGPT, my recommendation, put this on pause. Go on uh, Google, find the registration. You just need to have your Google or Apple account or Microsoft and, be, yeah, and become curious about this generative AI because this is a game changer. And when I don't want to sound like a used car salesman, but it's bigger than the internet. And it has profound impact on the way of work over the next couple of years. And if you don't understand what generative AI does, then you might get swept in the wave and wonder why am I having a difficult time either transitioning into new careers or simply finding a job? Yeah. It's really interesting about this AI way because unlike the internet where everybody said it was like a scam or a bubble, it, you can't really argue with the fact that we've seen AI over the last 20 years just progress. We've seen Google, Facebook, Amazon, all the tech companies really use AI and it's they've basically demolished and reinvented industries and it's going to be interesting where it goes forward. So you have a really interesting slant is this idea because most people are talking about how to keep their jobs. But you're actually talking about the future of AI in career development, job search sectors, how to use it. Tell us more about that. 
Great. And, and one of the things that I think you, you touched upon this, Chris, and I'd like to, to expand on that, is this idea that AI has been around really for about four or five decades. And we've all, we see it, like you mentioned, like the Netflix refer, recommending your next film, Amazon recommending the next product. Large corporations have been using this for decades to sell more stuff. Now, what's changed is generative AI. And that's really important to understand that when ChatGPT came out, generative AI has democratized AI. It's shown, it, it's a different kind of AI where they use what's called a large language model, an LLM, where, for example, the paid version of ChatGPT has over a trillion data points, and therefore it predicts the next, the next phrase. So if I say that yesterday love was it would know such an easy game to play and that this is the Beatles because it's just able to understand really all that to put that data. Now, sometimes people are being impacted by this without knowing because there's, you can go straight on the chat GPT and begin to understand how this works. But now it's being incorporated in large corporations, start being created every day that take this technology to make things easier. I know you, and we can talk a little bit about different industries, including the podcasting one, on how yeah. this technology revolutionizes the game. So the question is, and I actually talked to, for example, a number of students, and this is really important that there, if you're studying to be a graphic artist, or you're studying to be a marketing major, or to be an HR, whatever it is, it's important to understand that maybe some of the things that you've been focusing on you might need to adjust before you get out because that might not be like that might not be as as sellable when there is an automation out there that you press a button and it does what a year ago you had to pay someone a lot of money to do. Yeah, it's so fascinating because I'm hearing all these recently the Hollywood strike. You have the auto worker strike. You have healthcare strike, and as a shareholder or CEO of a company, I'm thinking, okay, if all these workers are going to strike. How can I use AI and robotics to ensure that I don't have these production lapses and all of that, which is, which my thing is the next question I have is what is an AI first job search strategy and why do you believe this approach offers job seekers an advantage? So if we take it from the job seeker point of view, I have been to so many meetings where I will meet somebody who has gone through. So if you're looking specifically at the job seeker strategy, there's roughly six phases. There's your career objectives, your updating your resume, updating your social media profile, uh, networking, applying to jobs and interviewing. Each of these phases have, there's ways that you can use AI. And I can show, for example, on career objectives. When somebody says to me, I'm not sure what I want to do, I'm thinking of changing my job or whatever that is, or maybe it's their first resume. I used to have a lot of friends that I would walk through. This took me a month. I'd have to have four or five meetings decide, but you want to do take a look at what's out there, determine your skills and yada, yada, yada. Now I can take, I can do one month's worth of work in one hour. Okay. Yeah. So I've met people who are four months into their job search and haven't done this exercise where you basically take a personality test. You can take any, anything that's a piece of data about yourself, about what you like, what you've accomplished. Throw in that plus an old resume, whenever your oldest version is, it might be a couple of years old. And then say, and I give you an example of a prompt, a, a command that you can give the chat GPT. You say, hey, chat GPT, based upon this data, give me five career choices and give me my compatibility as a percent, and then give me a two paragraph explanation on each of them. And then it will take all this data and it will say, hey, you're a 93% match for a product, project management, a 90% for a sales rep, 86% for gra for marketing manager. And it will go through and explain all that. And then you, it gives you, it, it doesn't tell you what to do, but it suddenly, it just literally took hours in seconds of work to be able to go there and say, wow, okay, I'm interested. Can you expand on number three? And then it will go and give you that data. That's how to take the power of AI of crunching large amounts of data and coming up with really valuable insights. Now, I've done this with people that have been unemployed for, let's say, four months, and mm. suddenly they're like, oh, I didn't think of that. And oh, right. I would go through that exercise and I would say, if you thought maybe if you're, like, for example, if you're sure. applying to jobs and either A, those jobs aren't out there, because right now, content creation, those kinds of jobs, 
are being destroyed by AI, so you mm-hmm. might want to change the kind of job you're looking for. So if you can't find them, or if you go on LinkedIn and there's 500 people that are applying for the job, then that means you probably need to go find something else to do because there's 500 on LinkedIn, but that means probably another 500 on the website using Indeed, using all these other places. So that is really key is to be cognizant of your skill set and how it's being impacted. So that's the idea that, that start now, if you haven't done that, do this analysis because maybe you're not being efficient with your time or wondering why are, why am I sending my resume and nobody's responding to me? Mm-hmm. This could probably at least tell you why and give you some direction on where to go. Yeah, it's interesting. We have so many stories to share. We shared so many stories. Just for example, a podcast will take, traditionally it would take people release a podcast a week and it takes hundreds, maybe sometimes thousands of dollars for production. And now with ChatGPT and AI editing software, you can produce a podcast in a day, almost as fast as a tweet or like an Instagram post. And it's so powerful. It's like saves, shaves so much time and been, you know, uh, for a fraction of the cost, which brings me to this next question. Oh, go ahead. I think you're going to well, 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 Let's yeah. dig into that because yeah, I, yeah. I, I, we were talking beforehand. I'd like to just ask you. <laughs> so like my understanding is that a podcaster, so, so this is a microcosm of every single industry out there. Now I, I'd like for, when I think of careers, I think of two things. I think of industries, finance, real estate, healthcare, technology, but I think of roles, marketing, sales. HR that are inside of these different industries. And if you think of it as a matrix like this, Mm. um, AI, depending upon the app, is disrupted both in the verticals as well as the roles. That's why it's so impactful. So let's take your example. Yeah. How many hours would it take two years ago? You made a podcast, right? You either had to pay someone like a thousand bucks to produce it, correct? And you might have to work, what, maybe three, four, five hours to review their work to make sure that, tell me if this is right. Yeah. To cut the video into smaller segments, you need to make a summary, you need to post on social media, mm. make shorts, et cetera. Is that a correct yeah. statement? Yeah, you're correct. So I'll give you an example is the amount of time for, say, for example, one podcast production, like a 30 minute, it would take probably, I say, total five hours of a man hour, just time. And you release a podcast episode in one week. Yeah. On top of that, you have to pay the editor. And so, for example, last year I was paying tens of thousands for a video editor, social media manager, content editor, et cetera. And now with uh, ChatGPT for 20 bucks a month and with AI editing software, which is like maybe a hundred bucks a year, I shaved one podcast down. I can create a podcast in 15 minutes. And that's just and that's from start to finish. And each pot, each episode will probably cost me maybe 25 cents. Very extremely, whereas one episode would cost hundreds of, maybe even thousands of dollars. So that's how rapidly things that if you're a content creator, you have to start thinking how to use AI, not how to rely on, of course, a team is good, but software as Mark Andreessen said that software is eating the world. So you just, that's one again, example. Think about when you're a multi-million billion dollar corporation and you're trying to shave costs, you can, it's almost, it's incredible. That, and that's this part that's really <laughs> scary because let's just take your example here. I'm going to expand upon it because this is really important for people in the audience to realize that you just mentioned you had a video editor. So imagine that I am a video editor. I used to have a job with Chris, right? Now all yeah. of a sudden Chris doesn't need me because there is a cast magic. What is it that you use? I mean, oh, I- so I use a, so I use a Wisecut, Opus Clip, the different AI, yes, basically these, oh, I also have to mention that in 15 minutes, you can not only do a podcast, but you can do a blog. You can post it throughout all the social media platforms. You can create reels, shorts, all these different things in that span of a time. And you can do it. Basically, it'll take one upload and it'll push it out to so many different that's how powerful it is. But I know you had that question. No, the, re- the reason I say this is that you have, so there's two, so let's just break this down because I want, I, I'll give a couple of different examples. But for your example, you have probably, you've, you have a 95% efficiency at least. So yeah. you take 120th the time of your time to produce 
and you've cut your expenses by about 95%. Now that's great for you as a podcaster. And however, when I'm thinking of somebody who's a video editor who maybe is in his, his or her 40s, they have a skill that up until a year ago was a very sought after skill, it was something that was difficult to do, but now we have an AI bot that can replicate it. So what are these people gonna do? And that is a, that's a very serious societal question. What are yeah. they going to do when they're, when large corporations get rid of their video editors because they might use one video editor instead of five because you yeah. have one guy who runs all of the work of five because they can use AI for that. And that becomes a question of where, how do I, as a video editor, come up with a new skill or reinvent myself so that I can compete in this economy? Yeah. And this is, so we take this one as an example. Now, let me give you a couple other ones. HR to me is one that is, is a little scary because let's take different aspects. You got one aspect, which is talent acquisition. Now we've always had applicant tracking systems and you need them because if you have 500 resumes coming in, you're going to have some sort of screening software. Now, a lot of those are using AI to be able to, to put some sort of compatibility match and be able to say, and be able to weed out 90% so you can get to a manageable amount to look at. But now they're also deploying these bots that do interviews. So imagine that you want to apply for a job and you, instead of talking to an actual screening recruiter, your screening call is with a bot. And the bot is able to then process the information and share that to the team. So now companies that have a large talent acquisition team can be more efficient. Now take the next thing, onboarding. There, there are apps that allow, that actually will take all of the company documents, take the role, upload it, and it will give a onboarding experience that's personalized based upon what this new hire is supposed to do. That used to take hours. It used to need someone with a very, with a degree. And so you ask the question, how many people in HR do you need? You'll definitely need something from a legal point of view, especially for large corporations. You'll need someone to be able to talk and be personable, but you are able, you don't have to hire as many people. And so that is Really, and the thing that's weird is that if I'm a small company or a medium-sized business, I have to deploy AI to stay competitive because my competitors are doing the same thing. So in a yeah. sense, it's adopting so fast. And my concern is a societal dislocation in which mm. it becomes in which you have a group of people that cannot find a job. And that's and when you have a large amount of people with a dislocation, it becomes very difficult to handle the financial stress and the other elements that these people are doing because they can't find their role in this new reality. Yeah, yeah really interesting. And I would like to have you back on uh, as a part two because there's so much to talk about. One final question before you tell the audience how they can contact you, follow you. But you mentioned this idea that I wanted to ask you is you're understanding generative AI, but you mentioned that generative AI is a democratization effect. What do you mean by that? So the before chat GPT, nobody, I think most people understood that AI is out there. They knew there's this magic when you do a Google search, but I really don't want to know what the magic is. Then chat GPT came out. There's a group, there was a group of people, myself included, where you're able to suddenly understand, wow, I can do, I can input data and you learn how to do it correctly to get an output that's personalized. And suddenly I can, so if I'm a sales rep and I want to do a personalized presentation, especially in the enterprise sales space, that's where I come from. I can go in and take the social media profile, the person I'm going to meet. I can throw in my Salesforce notes. I can throw in anything I need to know and say, Help me to understand this person's top five priorities. Help me find things that I have personally in common with this person. Help me, help me find what's my best way to pitch. And so my point is that's something that normally it might take hours to crunch the data to figure this out. And that's what the top reps would do. Now you can do it in minutes. And so that's the democratization is this idea that AI can be used by an individual, not just a large corporation. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. So. Really interesting. And how can people contact you, follow you, and we'll have you on as uh, part two of the show. Perfect. So I am available at 
bengoldai.com. That's my website. I do. I have a book called Find Your Next Job with ChatGPT that you can buy on my website. I also do, if anybody here would like for me to speak to their job seeker networking groups or are interested in personalized consulting for their business, how to be more efficient, how to use AI, I have the, some contact forms here. So there, that's really the way to find me I, I, on LinkedIn. I've got my profile, Ben Gold. So happy to connect with anybody on this show and would love to talk about AI. Yeah. Really, in, in, like I said, uh, the more I talk, I'm a, and I love this slant as using AI in job seeking, recruiting, HR, really a new aspect of AI. And for all the audience out there, let's thank Ben for coming onto the show and really talking about this wow. very important technology. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is a fantastic conversation. And I know we could go on, not that we do it for hours, but you can yeah. go into so many different directions about this.